Hey everybody, today we're back on the 300 Arctic Cat two-wheel drive and uh, I think it's a good day to go ahead and start tearing into the top end. Uh, we've got a few of the minor things fixed on it. Still got a few things to, to work on, but um, this way I can go ahead and get the top end apart and uh, figure out what I need, whether I need a piston or just need to hone the cylinder and put new rings on it or what. We'll just have to take a look at it and see. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started on that, and uh, I'll try to show a little bit of it if I can, so we'll get started here. Okay, I got the little black foot piece off. I got both side pieces off the seat. And I mean, this is the top end here. Uh, should have pretty good access to everything. I mean, you can get it from above pretty good too. Uh, this will have to go, somebody was using it for a carburetor vent. I don't really care for it. It's some kind of water line or something. Uh, I've got the fuel turned off. I need to pull the carburetor off. And pretty much get the carburetor off and I may leave this boot on. I don't think it has to come off, but uh, we'll get the time and chain tensioner out and we'll continue on. So I've drained the fuel out of the carburetor bowl and caught it underneath. This is the fuel line. It's probably got just a little in it, but I've got the fuel turned off. Throttle cable's broke right here. I don't know if I ever showed that. This is new, um, but I'll need, need to get the clamps for it. And it's missing the screw for the front clamp, so don't really have to worry about that right now. Those are things I'll have to address when I put it back together. But basically, the carburetor is off. I'm just gonna let it hang there. Uh, if it gets in the way, I'll go ahead and just take the choke and fuel lines off and get rid of it then, get it out of the way. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. So uh, we'll carry on. We'll move on to the tensioner now. This isn't the best angle, but right here's your time and chain tensioner. I like to take these loose right here first. Pretty tight. There'll be a spring in here. You can see right here's a spring. Big long spring. It's not super stiff. And so that's what pushes your tensioner out as your timing chain wears. So now there are two Allen bolts here. And I'm not worried about the engine being on top dead center or anything yet. I worry about that when we go to put put the cam chain and cam back on. Uh, then that's when I worry about the timing portion of it. You got that one and there's one here that's easier to get that y'all can't see. out so I don't lose them. It's kind of stuck to the case. Okay, so here's this. I 
The reason I don't like to take the spring out, or I don't like to leave the spring in is when you pull this out, this can automatically extend. This one's actually extended a lot. Well, I mean, it's extended all the way actually. The only way you can release this is the time and chain wears, it ratchets out. And the only way you can release it is to pull this back, pull this little piece back and it slides in. The spring ratchets it out and you can't push it back in as the chain wears. So according to this, our chain is worn a lot. So now I have to make the decision about putting a chain in it. We're already in here. I really hate to pop the side cover off of it, but we'll see. Okay, we gotta try to get these springs off the exhaust. You saw any of that, but I got one off. I don't have the special tool for this. Okay, now we gotta get all these 10 millimeter bolts out of the valve cover. These two I don't believe have to come out. I can't remember about this one. I'm kinda thinking no, but I'm not 100%, so uh, we'll see what happens. I'll go ahead and take these out. Okay, we got our valve cover off and we slipped the chain off the cam and got the cam out. And down in here, we got a couple of nuts, I think, uh, right there. And we'll have to take, there's one here and there's one under it. We'll have to take those off. And then these four uh, nuts here have to come off then we can get our cylinder head off. Uh, I won't probably be able to show these on camera, so uh, I'll go ahead and get those off. All right, the head's off, now we can pull the jug. Uh, there were two little 10 millimeter nuts here, I've already got them off, so. We'll just have to feed the timing chain through and pull this off. The O-ring was holding us up. There we go. 
to be careful getting the clip that holds the wrist pin in out and always stuff a rag around the piston to keep it from popping back down into the engine case if it goes flying or in my case a good pair of used underwear so now we'll just need to walk the wrist pin out of it and the piston should come out Well, it hit the ground, but it came out, so here's the piston. Okay, that's going to shut us down on this video. Uh, we got everything apart. Here's the cylinder. It looks pretty good, really. Uh, it's got some very, very minor scratches in it. Can't really see it, but there's still some cross hatching in there. Um, I really think this will just hone and be okay. Uh, I don't, there's no, no groove, ring groove at the top. Um, cylinder head looks fine. I'll just slap those valves and check them out, make sure everything looks okay there. Put new valve seals in the cylinder head. And the piston has some scratching. Um, it's not as bad on this side. But I don't know. I'll see about replacing that. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to replace it or just shine it up a little bit and put it back in there. Um, probably still be fine for a long time. But the i'm pretty sure the compression rings were not that bad on this but the the bottom one here right here is your oil control ring and it's not stuck in the bore which happens sometimes but it sure doesn't stick out very far past the piston um and it, it must just be they're probably all wore some but uh I think it still had pretty good compression. I think the oil ring was the one that's worn the most. Um, the cam looks fine. Don't see any real uh, bad wear on the cam journals. If it were to have been started with oil, these galled pretty quick because they're in this aluminum um, cylinder head here. They're right, riding in there. And there are a couple little scratches and things in it, but it's not golded like it's been run out of oil or anything. So that'll be fine for a lot of more years. Um, I can't really show you much here, but rods will always have a little side to side play. I don't know, this one may be a little excessive, but I'm not sure what to, really you have to measure it down at the bearing with feeler gauges, but uh, in and out is what you're concerned about mostly. So I'm pushing this way and then pulling back and I don't feel any any play that way. And that's the main thing. So I'm thinking we should be fine there. I'm probably gonna have to pull the side cover off and put a cam chain in it. Uh, was hoping not to have to do that. I was hoping it was just the rings, but um, that's just how it goes sometimes. So probably go ahead and order a cam chain for it too. Um, they're not that expensive. It's just kind of a chore to pull that side cover. Um, if anybody is, watches Watch West work on YouTube, uh, he's pulling the side cover off one right now. And he's, I think he's gonna pull the rear half of the machine off because it unbolts that way. I'm gonna try not to do that but we'll see how it goes. Um, I've had a lot of trouble getting those side covers off before. They, they get stuck on there pretty hard. So luckily there's quite a bit of room to get, get to it down here. So uh, I've done one in a quad runner before and it's a little tighter. 
so anyway, um, thank y'all for watching, and I'll update after I get some parts and we get tore on into the probably to go ahead and do the timing chain before I put the top end back on. So I'll catch up with y'all when we get started on that.